on? Why don't they like it? We spent $250 million on this! From revealing Fabrizio Romano's exciting update as Newcastle finally agreed deal with Wonderkid. Hey, that's pretty good! To discussing the latest massive financial boost under Saudi ownership. To uncovering Eddie Howe's transfer hint amid Malik Thayo potential move. Are you serious? Plus, we'll also discuss the latest developments on Liverpool's pursuit of Anthony Gordon. <laughs> hey y'all, come look at this! Join us as we uncover the latest Newcastle United news. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because you won't want to miss a single moment of this incredible journey. Let's go! Starting off, according to reports, AC Milan defender Malik Tayao's agent has dismissed claims that the player is close to joining Newcastle United. The Magpies have already strengthened their backline this summer, signing Lloyd Kelly from Bournemouth on a free transfer. However, they are still looking to add another centre-back to their squad with Sven Botman and Jamal Lassell still working on their recovery from serious knee injuries. A report from HITC suggested that Newcastle were in advanced talks with Italian giants Milan over a potential transfer for Tayao. However, the player's agent, Gordon Stipic, has now responded to these rumours, insisting that they are false and incorrect. Stipic told Sky Germany, The current reporting about my client Malik Tayao in connection with a possible transfer to Newcastle United is false and incorrect. Therefore, I will not comment on any further rumours. While a deal may not be imminent, Newcastle still retain an interest in signing the 22-year-old French defender from Milan this summer. Paolo Fonseca, who has replaced Stefano Pioli in the Milan dugout, does not view Thiao as a key part of his plans and is seemingly happy to part ways with the player. Milan are reportedly closing in on a deal to sign Strahinja Pavlovic, which will only knock Thiao further down the pecking order. Although a deal might not be close at this stage, Newcastle are said to highly appreciate the player. Speaking to Give Me Sport, the transfer specialist Fabrizio Romano said, Now, the interest in Malik Thiao remains, but I think a problem could be the price, because Milan are still asking for important money. It's not a player available for 20 million euros or something like that. That's why Newcastle appreciate the player. Newcastle maintain active contact with his agent, but it's not something close between clubs. Eddie Howe has also admitted that Malik Thiao is a very good player suggesting Newcastle United are big admirers of the centre-back after constant links with the AC Milan defender. Speaking to the local media who have joined the squad in Japan, it felt telling that he revealed his admiration of the German, as Howe often refuses to even discuss any player linked with a potential move. In response to Malik Thayao transfer links, Eddie Howe said, There are no updates on that. I'm always reluctant to comment on these things, but he is a player I know about. Of course I do. From our games in the Champions League against Milan, he is a very good player, but that is it. Theo has previously been linked with the likes of Bayern Munich and Real Madrid, but Newcastle appear to be among the front runners to secure his signature. Then moving on, in a significant move, Newcastle United have agreed a fee with Blackburn Rovers to sign the promising Irish teenager Rory Finneran. The news, which has now been confirmed, follows reports from earlier this year that Newcastle were closing in on a deal for the young midfielder. Reputable transfer journalist Fabrizio Romano broke the news and announced that a verbal agreement is in place, and Finneran is expected to sign his contract with the club, as the deal is done. And later after this update came into light, the player was then pictured and officially confirmed as a new Newcastle player. Finneran, who is considered a huge talent, has been the captain of the Irish under-17 squad. Despite being just 16 years old, he has already made an impressive impact, featuring seven times for Blackburn's under-21 side in the Premier League 2 last season. The teenager has also represented Ireland at the under-15, under-16 and under-17 levels, showcasing his potential on the international stage as well. Notably, Finneran made his senior debut for Blackburn against Cambridge United in last season's FA Cup at the tender age of 15, becoming the youngest debutant in the club's history. This experience will undoubtedly serve him well as he embarks on his journey with Newcastle. The signing of Finneran is the latest in a series of promising young talents that Newcastle have brought in this summer, including CJ Afumazor from Portsmouth, Aaron Epia from Everton, Ezra Tika Lemba from West Ham, Caden Lucas from Clevedon Town, and goalkeeper James Taylor from Hemel Hempstead. This acquisition of Rory Finneran is seen as a significant coup for Newcastle as they have fended off interest from several clubs in Germany and England to secure the services of the highly rated Irish midfielder. The Magpies will be hoping that Finneran can continue his development and potentially make an impact in the future at St. James's Park. 
In another intriguing development, according to transfer expert Fabrizio Romano, Liverpool remains strongly linked with a summer move for Newcastle United winger Anthony Gordon, but securing the player's signature will come at a significant cost. Gordon, who previously played for Liverpool's Merseyside rivals Everton, has just finished representing England at Euro 2024. However, his long-term future at Newcastle remains uncertain, with former Newcastle chief Amanda Staveley confirming that Liverpool were chasing the player earlier in the summer. While Gordon is still a Newcastle player for now, Romano suggests that losing him to Liverpool is still a possibility, even though the Magpies are desperate to keep the winger. As Romano states, in case they, referring to Liverpool, decide to do something in the offensive positions, Anthony Gordon remains a player they really rate, they really like, and so internally they are discussing the situation because they keep believing that he could be a fantastic player for the future of Liverpool. However, the main obstacle appears to be the valuation Newcastle have placed on Gordon. Romano explains, but again the problem could be the valuation with Newcastle, because he's a really important player for them, and they don't have the intention to make a normal price for Gordon. It has to be a big price for him in order to give a potential green light. Gordon enjoyed an impressive 2022-23 season, which earned him a place in the England squad for Euro 2024. At 23 years old, the winger is considered to have a bright future ahead of him, and Liverpool believe he could be a fantastic addition to their squad. However, with Newcastle unwilling to let Gordon go for a normal price, Liverpool will likely have to break the bank if they want to secure the services of the highly rated Newcastle star this summer. Then, in a reassuring message for Newcastle United fans, manager Eddie Howe has made it clear that he is fully committed to the club, despite speculation linking him to the vacant England national team job. Howe sat down with the press in Japan, where Newcastle is currently on their pre-season tour, ahead of their upcoming matches against Urawa Reds and Yokohama F Marinos. During the press conference, he was directly asked about the England job and his future at Newcastle. In response, Howe stated unequivocally, I have had no contact whatsoever from anybody. I am fully committed to Newcastle. There is nothing to talk about. I do not need to address the players. They know how by how I act, and I hope they can see how I am on a daily basis to see how committed I am to the club too. This statement from Howe will undoubtedly come as a relief to Newcastle supporters, who would have been concerned to see their highly regarded manager potentially leave for the England job. Howe has done an impressive job since taking over at Newcastle, guiding the club to a respectable finish in the Premier League last season. The England job has remained vacant since the departure of Gareth Southgate, and several high-profile names have been mentioned as potential candidates, including the likes of Thomas Tuchel and Mauricio Pochettino. However, Howe has now firmly ruled himself out of the running, stating that his sole focus is on continuing his work at Newcastle and potentially bringing in some fresh faces before the start of the new campaign. This reassurance from Howe is sure to calm any nerves among the Newcastle fanbase, who can now look ahead to the new season with their manager firmly committed to the project at St. James's Park. Then, in a massive piece of news, Newcastle United has received a major financial update from an official source showcasing the remarkable progress the club has made since being acquired by the Saudi Public Investment Fund nearly three years ago. The takeover, which saw Public Investment Fund, the Rubin Brothers, and PCP Capital Partners acquire the club from the much-maligned owner Mike Ashley, has ushered in a new era of ambition and investment at St. James's Park. Under the new owners, the club has been freed from the perceived lack of ambition that characterized the Ashley era, with plans now in place to transform Newcastle into one of the best teams in the world. One of the key factors driving this transformation has been the club's ability to navigate the Premier League's profit and sustainability rules, which limit clubs to losses of £105 million over a rolling three-year period. The club has been able to raise revenue through both commercial and match day streams, with the former nearly doubling in the public investment fund era. The architect of these financial gains has been Amanda Staveley, the public face of the takeover who took on a directorial position and a minority stake in the club. Stavely's recent exit from Newcastle has been confirmed, and she is now believed to be considering investing in another Premier League club, leveraging her strong connections in the Gulf region. The latest developments suggest that Stavely's time at Newcastle has been a remarkable financial success. A new report from Bloomberg indicates that the club's power brokers now value the club at £1 billion, a significant increase from the £305 million paid for the club in 2019. This valuation would make the potential sale of the club the second most expensive takeover in football history, 
And it also means that Stavely's 5.7% stake, which he has now sold to the Rubin brothers, was worth £57 million, considerably more than her initial investment. The rapid rise in the club's value can be attributed to several factors, including Stavely's excellent work in the commercial department, as well as the improvements to the club's physical and sporting infrastructure. The value of the squad, which is often a club's biggest single source of value, has also been a significant driver of the increased valuation. This major financial update from an official source serves as a testament to the transformative impact of the public investment fund's ownership and the strategic decisions made under their guidance. It is a clear indication that Newcastle United's journey under the new regime is well underway, with the club poised to continue its ascent towards becoming one of the elite teams in world football. Despite this, there have been new revelations as in a candid interview with The Athletic, former Newcastle United co-owner Amanda Staveley has opened up about her departure from the club earlier this summer, admitting she was devastated to lose her seat in the boardroom. Staveley, who played a key role in the Saudi-led takeover of Newcastle in 2021, revealed that she had mixed feelings about her exit, despite acknowledging that it was ultimately the best decision for the club. I'm devastated. It's such a wonderful club, so it feels very bittersweet. It has become part of my DNA, something you love so much and don't want to let go. It's very painful, Staveley said. The Ripon financier clarified that there was no falling out, and she would have been happy to stay on had the opportunity arisen. However, she recognized that it was important for the new management team, led by CEO Darren Eels and sporting director Paul Mitchell, to have the chance to deliver their own business plan. Maybe we were right for Newcastle for those few years. Maybe that's what they needed. But I'd be useless just standing there doing nothing and it wouldn't be fair on Darren if we're always there telling them what we think. There's processes and accountability and they'll figure it out, Staveley explained. Despite her departure, Staveley remained on board during the final weeks of the transfer window, fearing that the club might lose key players like Anthony Gordon or Alexander Isaac due to the pressure of the Premier League's profitability and sustainability regulations, PSR. My biggest concern was that we'd lose Alex or Anthony because Liverpool chased him and both are extraordinary players. Negotiating is tough because you have to pretend it means nothing to you when it means everything, she revealed. Staveley's candid comments shed light on the emotional toll of her exit from Newcastle United, a club she had grown to love deeply. However, she appears to understand the need for the new ownership group to chart their own course, while expressing her hope that the club's future remains bright under the guidance of the new management team. Then finally, if you would want to know the shocking rise of Anthony Gordon, click the video link on screen now.